So I'm pa I didn't talk about radiation zero two because I didn't uh, want us to start there. But I show you, you don't have to follow. I just show, show you how it works pretty fast. And then we go together and run a radiation analysis. So don't open this file, just, just watch the screen. In this one, I don't run any radiation. I just tell you what you can do with radiation. Again, no geometry. Uh, Lola, would you know? OK. Good to go. This, this, uh, in, in this example, I want to show you what you can do with the sky. And in any analysis that you have run so far for any daylight thing or radiation analysis, believe it or not, you use the sky. Because when you run, a, it's just like you run a rendering to, you have a light source. And for daylight thing, the light source is, is the sky. So if you don't generate the sky, you can't run the analysis. But have you ever watched the sky? No? Watch the sky, right? So let's go watch the sky. So let's, I, I want to show you some components that helps you to understand how the sky looks like in, in, your, in, in your area based on a weather file. So I go here, set one weather file. Where should we go? I can't hear you. OK, Tempo, where's that? OK. So the first thing, I need to generate the sky. There is a component which generates the sky for you. You can change the density. I don't. The first time that you run it, it takes a little bit long because it has to download some stuff. And then it downloads some stuff. It says, hello, Rami. Like, do not close the window. I put this because people, I saw, like, they close it, like, as soon as it comes up. This is not a virus. This is, it's running the calculations. So it generates the the diffuse component of the sky and direct component of the sky. And I'm using radiance gen daylight matrix to calculate that, thanks to Greg and who else? And Ash, hopefully, I, I think it's Greg and Ash. They developed that. This is brand new component. And it gives you so many things. So when it's, when it's done, it basically calculates for every single hour of the year, I know how the sky looks like. I know how much diffuse radiation I get. I know how much direct radiation I get and from where. This is basically all you need. And this component does all of that for you. So now I got the, the matrix, which is for the whole year. I have another component that lets me select which time for the sky I want. It could be a single point of the time, like when you run the simulation for 21st of June at 12 o'clock. Or it could be for a range, like all the summer or all the winter. So you just connect the sky here. And this component here basically lets you to, to, to select an analysis period. Now I selected it for the summer. And there's a component here which visualizes the sky. And what it needs <coughs> is your sky matrix. So I put the sky matrix here. And it takes a while, especially the first time, it takes a little bit longer because I have to generate the geometry. If you have your units on millimeters, it can take forever because Rhino is just so pitchy grasshopper. And here is your sky. This is how the sky looks like in that area. I don't know what was in the tempo. And this is how the sky looks like total, right? This is the sky. This is the, like, if I watch from the top, it's basically gut point of view. Like, if you go way far from the Earth, like there, is a, like, there is a sphere there. So this is how you see the sky from the top. This is your, and because it's summer, you can see the sun is up high. And this one shows the diffuse component of the sky. And you see when you have a diffuse sky, it's more all around. And this one shows the, you the direct component of the sky. It is helpful, it kind of gives you an idea, but it really doesn't tell you how much radiation you get from where, right? And now, something interesting is, if I go here and I say, let's add a month, as soon as I change this slider, it will regenerate the sky for me. You know, you can do the summer, you can do the winter, or you can say, do it for the whole year, or, and you can say, for a single hour of the year. So you see the sun is here. 
I want, let me see if I can find the diffuse error. That's an interesting. So this is sun is moving, sky patch. Let's do it next week. Because I'm like, where is this place? Why is it not ever cloudy? <laughs> it's always ready. Is the place everybody goes to beach? There is a beach? Okay, yeah, thank you. So, <laughs> so you see, like, we couldn't find a diffuse sky, but you could see how a cloudy sky looks like, that it gets brighter on the top. But we will see that next, next, next week, too. So I just preview off this component. So this was the sky dome. There is another component called radiation rose. I know you should know, like, I like roses. So you had the wind rose, so this is a radiation rose. It works the same. You, you select the selected sky matrix, you connect the selected sky matrix, and you set the run to true. And it basically, this time, it draws some roses for you, and this rose shows you how much radiation you get from where. I'm pretty sure at some point you, you have that cube that you put there and run a radiation analysis and it was red on the south, blue on the north, and you put it there as a radiation and orientation study. I have seen it so many. So this is basically something similar to that but makes sense. It basically shows you how much radiation you get from different directions on a surface, right? So this is how much radiation you get in this area from south. This is how much you get from west. You see, I can't understand where is West and East. How much you get from East, and then you, you can know how much of the radiation is diffuse and how much of the radiation is direct. If you change to a diffuse place, you can easily see how it gets like, it comes all around the place and you get a small component of, of direct. And what it tells you is just like, if you have a cloudy sky, then you start thinking, okay, how does really shading works for me, you know? Is it the place, is it the right place that I want to design a shading or is it the right place I want to play with the material type of my glass? You know, is it the place that I should take care of all around the building or is it the place that I should only take care of east and west or is it the place I should take care of east and west and south? You know, if you change to a place that, that is ne near equator, then you can see this thing changes like more like a circle. So it gives you an idea about directions. Again, no geometry inside, but you already get, get an idea about how you should design. This component next to the other component gives you a good idea because now you know how much radiation you get. This ones tell you where that radiation comes from. Okay, this is what I wanted to show you so far. There is something else here that we can play, but let's keep it for later. So we talked about wind, we talked about radiation, we talked about sun pass and shading design, and it was nothing about your geometries. Before I move, uh, let me show you this. Uh, you can, there is an input here that you, you can just ask to, to see only the total, not the three different inputs. One of the questions people usually have is, okay, this is a radiation road, cool, but how how I can find it inside my site, like I have other buildings blocking, right? So I just draw a couple of buildings here. And this is my test point in the center. So I can select these buildings and bring them to, to Grasshopper and I can connect it here as the context. So now it shows me the effect of that building too. So if you have a site you're designing, and definitely now this, this point is here, you can start moving the point upward, downward, right, left. You know, this is up to you. You can change the test point and see the effect of, of, uh, of the other buildings on the radiation that you get on that point, right? So I can move this, and you can see how it goes. One thing really useful is, like, if, if you're designing and you have an energy simulation somewhere, you run it, and you want to get to a target, usually have a radiation budget. You know, for example, if you get more than this amount of radiation into your building, you can't meet the energy use that you want. So you can, you can play with this component and have an idea about like how much radiation you get and try to bring it in, inside your budget, right? Even if you want to find the right location into your site, especially if you have a site which is like 
full of hills and you have like different buildings and you, you, you have the ability to select, which is something that you have for the summer studio. So probably you want to check different spaces and, and see where is the right place to put your building. Okay, guys, here we go. We have half an hour. We want to run <laughs> radiation analysis for your geometries. Any questions for the weather data stuff? Feeling good, feeling confident, like you can do it yourself?